It was built from 1930 to 1934. Uh, it, it was uh, construction was paused for one year because of the depression. It was built by the Aspley family, uh, Bruce Aspley. Uh, he passed it on to his son Walter Aspley. The plaza was their was their crowning jewel of their of their movie mini empire, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, when he built the multiplex, the, the modern multiplex down across from Walmart, he closed this theater and sold it to the Harper Slinker family. Uh, they tried to operate it for a little while, but it fell. In, they decided to close it, and it fell into disrepair and sat unoccupied for about 17 years. During most of the most of the 80s and the 90s, it was it was empty. Uh, and then at some point, they uh, um, decided they wanted to sell it. The city expressed an interest in purchasing it, and in 2001, the city purchased it, and then the renovations were completed in 2005. <music> They patterned it after some of the great movie palaces of the time. Uh, it was built by a local architect named Dixon Rapp. Uh, it was patterned after places like uh, the Fox in Atlanta and some of the big theaters around the country. Uh, it's a very large theater for a theater uh, for a community of only 14,000 people. The population of Glasgow has been about 14,000 for years. Uh, we seat over a thousand here, so we can get a 14th of the population of the city into our into our theater. Some of the famous people that have been here at the theater uh, include early on in their careers uh, Dolly Parton, uh, the Oak Ridge Boys, um, Gene Autry and his horse Champion. Champion was actually on the stage of the theater. Uh, at our grand reopening ceremonies we had several people get up and speak and one woman that talked was when the theater first opened she was about six years old and she got to go up on stage and feed Champion an apple. Uh, and She was here at the dedication of the theater at the reopening. Well, we have quite a few historic aspects remaining here in the theater. Uh, we have the original movie projectors that were here uh, from the 1930s. They're the old uh, carbon arc style uh, that you don't find in operation anymore just because they're, they're hazardous. Uh, they create a lot of toxic fumes. Uh, uh, they operate on the idea of a giant spark jumping a gap. We have some of the original equipment that runs the marquee. Uh, we have an old brush and rotor system that makes the top of the marquee operate. Uh, it's a huge box, you know, four foot by three foot that, you know, today would be operated by a couple computer chips, but it still runs the top of the marquee. Uh, about 60% of the ceiling uh, had to be replaced in the auditorium. Uh, a lot of the fabric, almost all the fabric goods had to be replaced because of moisture damage and also dry rot and mildew. Uh, the seats were kept, but they were reupholstered and refoamed with new upholstery and new foam. All the decorative curtains were replaced. Um, the stage was extended in this last renovation uh, so it could accommodate larger live acts because it was originally built as only a movie theater. Uh, even though in the second year of operation in 1935 they started bringing some live acts and the stage still wasn't very big. Um, so there were, those things were renovated. All, all the painting and detail and trim work and decoration on the walls is original to the theater. Uh, they had to do a little cleaning and touch up of the painting but all the faux finishes, the, the faux brick, the faux stone, uh, that's all original to the theater from 34. The plaza is especially important because it's the heritage of the, of the community. Well, we, we have lots of ways for people in the community to get involved, uh, both the proper road players and through the theater itself. Uh, there are only two full-time employees that manage the theater. Everyone else is a volunteer, so when people come to a show and they see ushers, ticket takers, ticket sellers, those are all volunteers. The people that grew up coming to the plaza, we get people every day stopping by wanting to just stick their head in. They're from out of town, they've moved away, they want to take a look at the plaza, they grew up here. Uh, they have fond memories, they know exactly which seats they sat in as kids growing up and watching the movie theaters. We even have uh, one woman who, we have a fundraising program where you can purchase a seat plaque and get a, a seat plaque inscribed and put on the seat of your choice. We have one woman who purchased a seat plaque and she put it on the seat where she had her first kiss and on the plaque it says, my first kiss. People just want a chance to escape. It's the same reason they go to the movies. Uh, it's just that movies can sometimes do things that are more special effects -y than we can do. Even though live a theater uh, can never be replaced by movies because it's that live event. I mean, you have a human being a few feet from you performing for you.